The fourth subplane of the monadic plane is in a very real sense the place of transition from off the egoic ray, whichever that ray may be, onto the monadic ray. These three major rays are organized on the three higher subplanes of the monadic plane in the same way that the three abstract subplanes of the mental or the group of transference from off the personality ray onto the egoic. The four lesser rays blend with the third major ray of active intelligence on the mental plane and on the atmic plane. The four Lagoy or planetary spirits work as one, on the admic plane. I. Another synthesis takes place on the synthetic second ray on the second subplane of the Buddhist plane and the monadic plane, while the comparatively few monads of lower power are synthesized on the atomic subplane of the admic. All three groups of monads work in triple form on the mental plane under the Mahatohan, the Manu, and the Bodhisattva, or the Christ. On the second or monadic plane they work as a unit, only demonstrat. 128 TREATISE on cosmic fire. In their dual work on the Admic plane, and their essential triplicity on the Buddhic plane.55 the fourth etheric plane holds the key to the dominance of matter, and it might be noted that, on the fourth physical ether man begins to coordinate his astral, or emotional body, and to escape at ever more frequent intervals into that vehicle. Continuity of consciousness is achieved when a man has mastered the four ethers. On the fourth subplane of the mental plane, man begins to control his causal or egoic body, and to polarize his consciousness therein until the polarization is complete. He functions then consciously on it when he has mastered the correspondences to the ethers on the mental plane. On the Buddhist plane, the fourth cosmic ether, the heavenly man, or the group consciousness of the human and Buddha monads, begin to function, and to escape eventually from the cosmic etheric plane. When these three cosmic ethers are mastered, the functioning is perfected, polarization is centered in the monad.
Pearl eliminates his cosmic astral body and attains continuity of consciousness when he has mastered the three cosmic ethers. K. It is to be observed that just as in man the dense physical body in its three grades dense, will put Dan. Gaseous is not recognized as a principle, so in the cosmic sense the physical dense astral liquid and mental gaseous levels are likewise regarded as non-existing, and the solar system has its location on the fourth ether. The seven sacred planets are composed of matter of this fourth ether, and the seven heavenly men, whose bodies they are, function normally on the fourth plane of the system, the Buddhist or the fourth cosmic ether. When man has attained the consciousness of the Buddhist plane, he has raised his consciousness to that of the heavenly man in whose body he is a cell. This is achieved as the fourth initiation, the liberating initiation. At the fifth initiation he ascends with the heavenly man onto the fifth plane, from the human standpoint he admits. And at the sixth he has dominated the second cosmic ether and has monodic consciousness and continuity of function. At the seventh initiation he dominates the entire sphere of matter contained in the lowest cosmic plane, escapes from all etheric contact, and functions on the cosmic astral plane. The past solar system saw the surmounting of the three lowest cosmic physical planes viewed from the matter standpoint and the coordination of Vehicles of spiritual life, 
the higher esoteric correspondence to the tana flowing through the lower reflection, the etheric physical body, the point of synthesis is always on the atomic subplane, and the six merge and become the seven. In this solar system the plane of synthesis is not included in the evolutionary scheme. It is the plane of gathering in and of Pralaya. In the earlier system the fourth Adurit was in this position, it was to the evolving units of that period what the atomic plane is now, the highest point of achievement. The goal for all was the wounded plane or the fourth cosmic ether. Three other planes are the goal now, the Buddhic, Atmic and Monotic, each time three planes and their eventual synthesis. In the future solar system the cosmic physical atomic ether, the plane of body and the system now, will be the starting point in the three planes to be dominated. Will be the three lowest cosmic astral planes. Man starts in where he leaves off, with cosmic physical matter perfected. His lowest body, therefore, will be the monotic or the body of the second cosmic ether. This will not be then counted as a principle any more than the threefold lower physical body of present day man is recognized as a principle. The present solar system will see the surmounting of the three next cosmic physical planes, the fourth, third, and the second ether, and the coordination of the cosmic etheric body. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-B-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-123 Solar radiations are received, and circulated three times around the triangle, thence being distributed to the periphery of the body, animating and vitalizing all the physical organs and conducing to the automatic subconscious workings of the body of dense matter. When perfectly accomplishing its object it protects from disease, and the ills of the flesh are unknown to the man who absorbs and distributes prana with accuracy. This hint is recommended to all physicians, and when properly comprehended, will result in a basic change in medicine, from a curative to a preventive foundation. The second stage is that in which the pranic fluids begin to blend with the fire at the base of the spine and to drive that fire slowly upwards, transferring its heat from the centers below the solar plexus to the three higher centers that of the heart, the throat and the head. This is a long and slow process when left to the unaided force of nature, but it is just here that in a few cases, a quickening of the process is permitted in order to equip workers in the field of human service. This is the object of all occult training. This angle of the matter we will take up in still greater detail when we handle our next point of Kundalini and the spine. The third stage of that in which active radiatory matter or prana is blended ever more perfectly with the fire latent in matter. This results, as will be brought out later, in certain effects. It produces a quickening of the normal vibration of the physical body so that it responds with more readiness to the higher note of the ego, and causes a steady rising of the blending fires through the prefold channel and the spinal column. In the second stage this vitalizing blended fire reaches the center between the lower part of the shoulder blades, which is the point of conjunction, and of complete merging, of the fire from the base of the 124 A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on cosmic fire, spine and the fire circulating along the granite triangle. It will be remembered how one point of this triangle originates there. When the threefold base of fire and the threefold granite fire meet and merge, then evolution proceeds with greatly increased velocity. This is effective definitely at the first instance.
initiation when the polarization becomes fixed in one or other of the three higher centers, which center being dependent upon a man's ray. The result of this merging leads to a change in the action of the centers. They become wheels turning upon themselves, and from a purely rotary movement become fourth dimensional in action and manifest as radiant whirling centers of living fire. The three major head centers, the sequence varying according to ray, become active in a similar process is effected between them as was effected in the pranic triangle. From being three centers that react faintly to each other's vibratory movement, feeling the warmth and rhythm of each other, yet separated for fire. Leaps from center to center, and each whirling wheel becomes linked by a chain of fire till there is a triangle of fire through which the kundalini and pranic fires radiate back and forth. Circulation is also carried on. The fire of kundalini produces the heat of the center, and its intense radiance and brilliance, while the pranic emanatory fire produces ever-increasing activity and rotation. As time elapses between the first and fourth initiation, the threefold channel in the spine, and the entire etheric body is gradually cleansed and purified by the action of the fire till all dross, as the Christian expresses it, is burned away, and not remains to impede the progress of this flame. As the fire of Kundalini and Prana proceed with their work, and the channel becomes more and more clear, the centers more active, and the body purer, the flame. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-D-O-V-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-125 Of spirit, or the fire from the ego, comes more actively downward still a flame of real brilliance issues from the top of the head. This flame surges upwards through the bodies towards its source, the causal body. Simultaneously with the activity of these fires of matter and its spirit, the fires of mind, or manas, burn with greater intensity. These are the fires given at individualization. They are fed continuously by the fire of matter, and their heat is augmented by solar emanatory fire, which originates on the cosmic levels of mind. It is this aspect of the manasic fire that develops under the forms of instinct, animal memory, and functional recollection which are so apparent in the little evolved man. As time progresses the fire of mind burns more brightly and thus reaches a point where it begins to burn through the etheric web that portion of the web that can be found guarding the center at the very top of the head and admitting entrance to the downflow from the spirit. Lights means certain things are brought about. The Kundalini fire is consciously directed and controlled by the mind or will aspect from the mental plane. The two fires of matter by the power of the mind of man are blended first with each other, and, secondly, with the fire of mind. The united result of this blending is the destruction under rule and order of the etheric web, and the consequent production of continuity of consciousness and the admission into the personal life of man of life more abundant for the third fire of spirit. The downrush of spirit and the uprising of the inner fires of matter controlled and directed by the conscious action of the fire of mind produce corresponding results on the same levels on the astral and mental planes so that a paralleling contact is brought about, and the great work of liberation proceeds in an ordered manner. The three first initiations see these results perfected. 126. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on Cosmic Fire. 
and lead to the fort, where the intensity of the united fires results in the complete burning away of all barriers, and the liberation of the spirit by conscious directed effort from out its threefold lower sheath. Man has consciously to bring about his own liberation. These results are self-induced by the man himself, as he is emancipated from the three worlds, and has broken the wheel of rebirth himself instead of being broken upon it. It will be apparent from this elucidation that the exceeding importance of the etheric vehicle as separator of the fighters has been brought forward, and consequently we have brought far notable changes that must be channel up the spine is still clogged and blocked, and therefore acts as a barrier. Turning the flame backwards and downwards, and that the flame being united by the power of mind and not being accompanied by a simultaneous downflow from the plane of spirit permits the entrance, through the burning etheric, of undesirable and extraneous forces, currents, and even entities these wreck and tear and ruin. What is left of the etheric vehicle, of the brain tissue and even of the dense physical body itself? The unwary man, being unaware of his ray and therefore of the proper geometrical form of triangle that is. T-H-E-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-V-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-127 the correct method of circulation from center to center will drive the fire in unlawful progression and thus burn up tissue. This will result then is in nothing worse in a setting back for several lives of the clock of his progress, for he will have to spend much time in rebuilding where he destroyed and with recapitulating on right lines all the work to be done. If a man persists from life to life in this line of action, if he neglects his spiritual development and concentrates on intellectual effort turned to the manipulation of matter for selfish ends, if he continues this in spite of the promptings of his inner self, and in spite of the warnings that may reach him from those who watch, and if this is carried on for a long period he may bring upon himself a destruction that is final for this man van terror cycle. He may, by the uniting of the two fires of matter and the dual expression of mental fire, succeed in the complete destruction of the physical permanent atom, and thereby sever his connection with the higher self for eons of time, H, P, B, has somewhat touched on this when speaking of lost souls, 5859 we must here emphasize the reality of this dire disaster and sound a warning note to those who approach the subject of the fires of matter with all its latent dangers. The blending of these fires must be the result of spiritualized knowledge solely by the light of the spirit, who works through love and is love, and who seeks this unification and this other merging not from the point of view of sensor of material gratification, but with his liberation and purification is desired in order that the higher union with the logos may be effective. 
his union must be desired, not for selfish ends, but for his true perfection as the goal and scope for greater service to the race must be achieved. FPA's Lost Soul. See Isis Unveiled, Volume 2, page 368, also S. P. I. 255, and S. P. 3, 493, 513 to 516, 521, 525, 527. 59 CS, P. 3, 523 to 529. 128 ATRE E-E-A-T-H-A-N-D-T-A-T-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y It is not our purpose to give facts for verification by science, or even to point the way to the next step onward for scientific investigators, that we may do so is but incidental and purely secondary. What we seek mainly is to give indications of the development and correspondence of the threefold hole that makes the solar system what it is, vehicle through which a great cosmic entity, the solar logos, manifests active intelligence with the purpose and view of demonstrating perfectly the love side of his nature. Back of this design lies a yet more esoteric and ulterior purpose in the will consciousness of the Supreme Being, which perforce will be later demonstrated when the present objective is attained. The dual alternation of objective manifestation and of subjective obscuration, the periodic outbreathing, followed by the inbreathing of all that has been carried forward through evolution embodies in the system one of the basic cosmic vibrations, and the keynote of that cosmic entity whose body we are. The heartbeats of the logos, if it might be so inadequately expressed, are the source of all cyclic evolution, and hence the importance attached to that aspect of development called the heart, or love aspect, and the interest that is awakened by the study of rhythm. This is true, not only cosmically and macrocosmically, but likewise in the study of the human unit. Underlying all the physical sense attached to rhythm, vibration, cycles and heartbeat, lie their subjective analogies love, feeling, emotion, desire, harmony, synthesis and ordered sequence, and back of these analogies lies the source of all, the identity of that supreme being who thus expresses himself. Therefore, the study of Pralaya, or the withdrawal of the life from out of the etheric vehicle will be the same. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-V-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-129 Whether one studies the withdrawal of the human etheric devil, the withdrawal of the planetary etheric devil, or the withdrawal of the etheric devil of the solar system. The effect is the same and the consequence is similar. What is the result of this withdrawal, or rather what causes this something which we call death or Goliath? As we are strictly pursuing the textbook style in this treatise, we will continue our methods of tabulation. The withdrawal of the etheric double of a man, a planet, and a system is brought about by the following causes. A. The cessation of desire. This should be the result of all evolutionary process. F. True death, under the law, is brought about by the attainment of the objective, and hence by the cessation of aspiration. As the perfected cycle draws to its close, will be true of the individual human being, of the heavenly man, and of the logos himself. B. The slowing down and gradual cessation of the cyclic rhythm.